Anyway, so go ahead and have a seat. We have a couple mingled in throughout. Pretty cool. Today we're going to talk about object-oriented programming, sort of, but mostly code reuse is our problem. We need to reuse code, not just write it through. And I tricked you all, I gave you a fancy title, and you're getting an autobiography. This has been my past three years. So we get into our presentation, let's talk about me, and then we'll stop talking about me and do the board stuff. Okay, so I've worked at Bluehost about three years. I've been working in computers roughly six, or programming, I guess I should say. And I started as a gopher in a small company. Best job ever, if only I could be paid what I am now. Go. I love being told, go pick us up some soda, okay? Your dime. Anyway, on to better things, or no. Okay, so, what this is all about. It's really everything I've learned in the past three years because we've just been doing this. I was hired on Bluehost, and we were given this awful task of make a cube. Big, general task. But we'll get into all those details later. So, we need to transition from new code for every problem. What it done is not always what you should do it. Maybe you're updating a database thing and that makes sense. You're just populating a column, you make a cron, script, you run it, throw it away, you're good. Instead, we'd rather make your code popular. Why? So, in the middle of the night, someone calls your code and not you. In the middle of anything, someone can call your code. You don't want to be bothered. Make your code do the work, make it reusable, and then you don't have to copy and paste and then adapt it to make it work over here. You just have a happy little piece of code that you can use anywhere. As programmers, we are problem solvers, and that's great. Someone comes along and they say, hey, I need you to leap over that tall building. You do it. I need code that can be stronger than a locomotive. That's the speedy bullet. You do it. And that is great. That's what the program is all about. Us solving problems and being better. And making it so that we can go home and enjoy the weekend, hopefully. So this is our transition from the plastic knife of one and done to the metal knife of utility that we stick in the dishwasher and we use it again. Why? Because if you start a project, you don't want this. How long have you spent looking through code? Where is it? Even if you have a graph, I don't care. They all look white, they all look the same. It's not very fun. I mean, when I was a kid, I loved Burzwald. I loved it. But that was a game. That was not the game I played before I started working. My brain's tired after Burzwald, or I Spy, or whatever it is you're playing. You don't want to do that. So, here's how it goes. Some manager somewhere, this is what he says. I need a program that can stage fight between you. Thank you, Mr. Vagness. We'll go make your program. Whatever. You ask for it, I'll give it to you exactly as you said it. So then he gives you these dumb rules. You can only use simple variables, and you have to type every action out as it's on set of code. No, you, no reuse. Just the reason we have these rules is that's kind of what I was doing when I was younger in the, in the language. I'd be given a problem, and I'd go address the problem as an individual thing. Code is going to live over here all by itself, and it's never going to talk to, touch, or play with anything else. Not happy. So, in English, because we don't need to look at code for this one, it's a waste of code. You find it with something really ridiculous like this, and it goes on and on and on. Person one and person two start to fight, person one throws back his fist. Now I should stop and say, I don't condone fighting. There's a reason we chose fighting, you'll see it later. Anyway. We have these ridiculous long sentences that really don't say much. We can substitute something in there like punch. But we'll get to that. What's our code summary for that? That's some lame code. Lame duck. It's not going to fly. Somebody higher than you hopefully comes along and says, why would you ever do that? Go rewrite. My boss is in here. He does that to me all the time. Why would you do it that way? Uh, because it works? No, not a good answer. Why? Because it requires many variables and repetition. And the code is really only meant to do this one. That is sad. So, let's give it a second roll. You don't have to make every action itself. You can redo things. So let's introduce a routine to throw a punch and a kick. Here we go. Suddenly our sentences are not so long and choppy and they're much easier to read. And then we just have a free definition down here that says, hey, that's what it means. So much easier, so much simpler. And you can copy paste your function into something else. That's not terrible. It's less lame, but the duckling is still sad. <laughs> the winter is coming. He does not want to be late. So the benefits are it's shorter, easier to read, and code is reused. Huzzah! 
However, drawbacks are the methods are still just in the script. It's still one instance, one and done. Made pretty code, it, it's shorter, but it's still messy. So let's get rid of that first rule, because your manager probably doesn't know what he's talking about if he's not a code manager. He's just some guy in the company that says, I need this thing, and I need it to work like this. So let's introduce an object. Ooh, ominous. So if we come in here, Back. It doesn't look very different. Really all we've done down here is say we have a person and that's someone who can do these things. Still looks the same. Is that bad? No. Why? Because your code is happy. Your code is as happy as your object is. If you make a bad object, your code is still going to be miserable. I can't help you. You want to talk to the experienced people you're working with. And this really does apply in most languages. If you're allowed to do an object of some sort or reuse code through a various means, happy as your code is, it'll be that way elsewhere. And so, if done correctly, your code can be used in other places. And that's really the goal. My code isn't meant just for me. It should be for everybody, so that when I leave the company in six years, someone can curse my name because they're still using my own. Okay, so we're going to actually write pseudocode. Don't trust anything I did here. I typed this in the presentation thing. It was never touched into Vim or Emacs or anything. So. It's just kind of a basic idea for what the person object would look like. We have a package person. We use strict warnings because we like them and they keep us safe and keep us from doing dumb things. Or at least they tell us that we do. And then we create a new function. Very standard. And our subroutines, they could really do anything. Maybe all you're doing is dealing with damage. It's all, it's all about what you're doing for your file. It doesn't matter what's in the method. It matters that you can call a method and it will do the same thing every time. Or you can program it to do special things all the time, but that's your, that's your turn. So, now let's go look at what a script would kind of do. Back to our fight, this is what it would look like in code. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather read that. I know what's happening. Person one's doing some actions. Person two's doing some actions. Um, things like this, though, that's not exactly how you'd always do the function. I'm just assuming that you're passing an object in to receive a function. It's all about how you did your method. Whatever you pass in, it debates. It debates Whatever you tell it to. You are the programmer. It's like the number one rule. Don't forget that. I'm trying to test something. I can't test it because of this. Wait, I'm a programmer. What if I just go delete these lines that are blocking me? Test it, prove it works, and then we'll try and get it working on me. Because alpha isn't always the happy environment. I can't tell you how many times I've made that mistake. I'm stuck on something silly. Oh, if I just delete that, I can get it. Okay, so we have victory. All the things. You can do all the things that your object can do anywhere. Why? Because you put it into a reusable form. Reuse is the essence of everything. That said, don't make too many objects. You don't need an object for everything. So this is a good chance you can objectify whatever you want. It's OK. So what can a object do? You can hold things a lot better than the line back. <laughs> We can put health in there, we can put strength, level, we can put a name. Whatever you can think that defines a person, we can stuff it in that object, and it will be that object. <coughs> now, if I seem to be going a little fast, the reason is, I don't want to just do this presentation and then have you leave and never think about it. After we're done, I'd really like if you guys took some time to turn and talk to each other. The other reason is, lunch is next. If you're there first, you get first pick. Yesterday, all the tasty Italian sandwiches were gone. <laughs> what? I wanted one of those Italian sandwiches. But anyway. I did get it. Yeah, I, re I returned to our presentation. So if we finish, I really do want you to talk to each other. You're here to network. There are so many classes, you can't be in all of them, and you certainly can't spend time talking to So if we get done early, which is what I'm planning to do, talk, network, grow, learn things, contradict everything I've said in here if that's what it takes. Spend some time together. Anyway, objects hold things. It's what they do. They do it really well. If you'd done this with single variables, you'd have hundreds of them. It would be terrible. It would make me cry. I would have to come and remind us. So remember that manager we were talking about? He had that, he had that great statement. I just need some program. What did he really mean by that? Because if you didn't spend time talking to him to interpret it, he just assumed you were psychic. Why? Because you've always done these other great things. This is what he wanted. He wanted a superhero versus a villain. He wanted a showdown. <laughs> wanted something glorious. Never bothered to tell you that because you're a programmer. You're supposed to know these. 
Comes with a terry. So, here you go. Again, you were supposed to know those things. That's what he wanted. They're trending right now. It's a trendy thing to have superheroes. That's why we have so many superhero movies going on. You're a hero. You should have known it. We need tall buildings. Why can't you make this program? <laughs> Thanks, manager. Self-esteem in the time. So, what are our solutions? Well, we can start over. Who wants to start over? Not me. I can tell you the number of times I've started over. We had an object, we built it, we didn't do it right. That one we had to rewrite from the ground up. Then it was mostly right, but we still rewrote it. It's not fun. I don't ever want to do it. So okay. we, we could just add a variable that says, hey, it's a hero or a villain. That's pretty easy. Or we could just make two objects. So we have a hero object and a villain object. That would be too simple. And it would have repetition. Let's do all three. All three. It's so quiet. It's exciting. We're doing three ideas in one. Oh, we're combining yeah. the three ideas. Yeah, we're combining okay. all three. So, in order to start over, we need to build our new object, or we need to build the person object right. Before, we weren't passing in any art, so we were basically just getting a self object that was just built, and it can call now we can pass it some arts, like a type. You can be all that you can be this way. You can make any number of types. It really depends on what you want. In our case, we have a hero and a villain type. Uh, you'll notice down there I decided that in the event that someone do I don't ask you. In the event that someone doesn't pass a type, we're just going to assume he's normal, so that there is a type. We don't want an undeath error somewhere down below. And you'll want to build getters and setters and things like that that you can manipulate the data with. But we didn't go into those. So that's that's being an object. This is the idea of using objects and why you should do it. Now, we need to add a variable for solution two. We just add the variable, we need lots of conditional logic, like we said. If we just put a type in there, suddenly we go through the code inside person and we say, if you're normal, do this. If you're a hero, do this. If you're a villain, do this. If you get to sniff else or these nasty other things. There are lots of ways to do it. It's a lot of code, it's a lot of waste of time. That's why we want to do all three. Special code does not do Okay, so back to our idea of two objects. How are we implementing that? We're going to make a directory for person. And I know we could use touch or whatever. I just bin the files because I intend to go straight in and edit them. So we make the two files. We have a hero PM and a villain PM inside the person directory that we made right next to the person. Yay! Space. Now tell the two files. What do you notice? Pretty bland, pretty boring. What we did is we used the base of person and we inherited all of the functions that person has. Whatever we put in person, we can use in here. That said, we're not going to go into polymorphism, but whatever we did in person, we can overload it. If I want the punch to be different for the hero and the punch to be different for the villain, I can do it in here. Let's say that I was going to subtract two health with the villain and add one to himself, because he's got some kind of magic in each line. Ominous. I would just redefine the punch function in here, but I would do that. And it would be great. And it could do whatever I want. And then I can make the hero different. And that way, they're not the same. Because if I try and do everything just in person, again, I'm going to end up with conditional logic in here. Granted, I have no functions in here because we're not building a super fancy object that we intend to use right now. This is just our base framework. You can go anywhere. Again, the most important part is set the package up right so you can find where you're at and then use the basic person. Typing. No, not on the computer. Instead of adding use person, colon, colon, hero, slash villain, after you use your command to store the directory, oh, sorry, um, at the top of your file, you obviously have to use something. You use the person. And you could just do use person, colon, colon, hero, use person, colon, colon, villain. But we have this fun way that we've been doing at work where you just build a person object, you pass in a type, and we make the code do the work. So you don't have to think about it. What we do is we come down in here, we open up the directory, we read it in, we store it in this array of items, which is all the files, and then we make a map that has the key of the type and of the directory. So we'll just take care of that for you. We'll see the next part on the next slide. So we modify new again, so that we call this function prepare type. I just like to take it out of new so that I can overload it some. That way I can make it special for each one if I need. Hopefully I don't. Shouldn't. It also makes it small. If I can't see it on one screen, I'm perfect. I can't see it all on one screen. I go find the employee responsible. I have some coworkers who can attest to it. A bit OCD. 
Anyway, so when we look at our prepared type function, we come in, we just lowercase the type to make sure no one passed anything, period. We don't even deal with sending caps in the middle of sentences. Um, if it's a normal one, we just return it. We're not changing anything. We look inside our modules. Remember, we had that items defined for us, the hash. We get our type out. It gives us the module. We make sure, the mo <coughs> make sure we have a module. And then we retype it. We rebuild the self object with the appropriate one. So it gets the right methods. I like this. You might not. It's kind of up to you. The reason I like it is I load one object at the top of the page and I don't have to worry about it. When someone comes along and makes 14 types next year, I don't have to load all of those individually at the top of the page. It will automatically, automatically take care of itself later. Okay, so I don't know if it's really a tree. I've decided it's an object tree for all intents and purposes of this page. We come in, we use our person, and then we just build our hero. Now it's a hero. We can change the variable to be whatever we want. We just pass that as a type, and you're done. You're getting the functions from there. Everything's ready to go, and you can wage the battles. Now that said, there are setbacks. That manager that doesn't know what's going on, he's not usually a programmer manager. He's some guy that wants some function. He's going to come along, and he's going to create something awful. He says we want a back credit card. No, you don't. It doesn't make any sense why we back credit card. Terrible, terrible movie. But yes, so once you love your object, someone's going to ask for something, and the custom ideas will keep coming. What do I do with that? Somebody's ruined my object. Now I have to maintain it. I don't like maintaining it. Well, you learn to speak their language, and you introduce fancy buzzwords. One of our fancy buzzwords of the day. Oh, sorry. Nostalgia first. Let's go over that. You loved your object. You built it. It doesn't matter what you thought of the object. This is the vision that you have in your head, and you will always remember it. When I built my outreach item, or I guess it was the Q item in the beginning, I finally got to the point that I liked him, and he will always be this iconic figure in my head. No one can take that from me. And equally awesome, when we converted it over to the outreach item, we got it stable and happy. I loved him. But he will never be that again. He will always be in my head. <coughs> Somebody will come along and fix your item, and if it's you, use the magic buzzword, rebranding. You can't do this all the time, but occasionally you can make that transition from you to outreach or to something else. And you just mix in some of the work in the background and you do all the heavy lift. Marketing doesn't need to know that the reason it took a week to rename it was because you changed all the files and made them happen again. They don't need to know that part. They just need to know that you did what they asked. We don't talk about it. It's a dark secret. And someone will make your object awesome again if you build it properly. Or maybe it goes down the deprecation cycle because it's no longer needed. But if you built it right, and it's still useful, somebody will make it awesome. So what to do? Now you have great power, great responsibility. What are you going to do with it? Hopefully you're going to build some objects. Do something fun and exciting. It doesn't matter if you build the object that stays in the system forever. It matters that it serves you. You are the master of your life. If you're in a similar situation to me, I maintain a lot of the code that I've written. And I'm so thankful for it because I know where things are. I formatted them how I wanted. My boss hopefully approves of them and doesn't beat me later. And it, it's just there for me. And when I make a new object, I always go back to the original code. I go back and say, what did I do last time that made this one go? What can I do to make this next object better? In fact, I've been trying to get my opportunity to go back and introduce not just a type of code, because we have some code that's making me put if, if statements everywhere, and it breaks my heart every if. Every if is a damn, it's like acronym. But it's your job to find ways to reuse the code. I can't tell you every way to reuse it. I can't tell you every way to make it better. So, there are some great things to study, and they're kind of related. Polymorphism, as we said, it's your ability to overload to function and just make it your own for each instance. That's why we wanted to use a magic object tree. So that you could use some polymorphism and redo things. Super is amazing. If you don't know what super is, it's this happy thing that when you're doing polymorphism allows you to call the original method. So if you had an attack and 
and it's just dealing a straight draw to damage. You can call that, and then you can add whatever you want onto it by using super. It's a fantastic way to make a function repeat all the code that you've already written without rewriting the code inside the object. And of course, best practices. Not just, not just Amy and Conway's book. We like this book. It has a lot of good things in it. But you've got best practices in your company, or just things that you can read on the internet. You need to find out what you should be focused on and what you're doing. Because when you make happy code, you get to be happy in turn. Because when you have to maintain that code, for whatever reason, you're not cursing your own name. It's much more fun to curse your coworkers than it is to curse yourself. So, a couple places you should go look. There's some things you should review. Um, Perl Doc's amazing. There's a Perl Ops and a Perl OOT. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yes. But the point is, they have a lot of details about building successful objects. Wow, it's a lot shorter than I thought it would be. And CPAN, if you're going to build an object, why don't you go see if the object already exists before you build it? Because we don't need another one. For example, if you're building a date-time object, dates and time are the most horrible thing in the world. You will cry. You will cry. Date-time yeah. does all the hard work for you. <clears throat> and it might not be exactly right for you Maybe you find something you need in one of the things on there. But these objects are out there to help you. And if you make something truly amazing, put it on CP. Somebody else has the same problem. They need it, they want it. So, now is the moment. Carpe diem. <coughs> Be famous. Whatever it takes. You have some basic knowledge. I can't give you everything that you need to know. But seize the day. Go out. Make the moment yours. Regardless of what reporters and critics say. You are the talented individual that gets to make the code live, gets to make the code move and function. And hopefully you get to share your code with more people, because the more people that share code, the less we have to write. If we all rewrite the same programs, we lose out on a lot of the project progress that we can accomplish as a group. And thanks for being awesome. It's not, it's not a good day when you see that I have. Okay, so let's let's go if anyone has some questions. Ooh. Ooh! That ooh! Okay, ooh, go. ooh! Can you show us an example of using super? Using super. In the way that you were saying? <laughs> say you have your sub punch, and your sub punch does two damage. And say you have the villain, and he's going to knee you in the, the other right. head. You're making this way. That's where I was thinking of, in the head. Yeah. We have markers. Excellent. You have a computer. I don't want to type. I like whiteboards. Ah. Okay. So our question is, besides, I don't want to go back to the slides. And I am cat is protected. <coughs> okay, so we have a person object over here. Let's give out all the details. Except to say this person, and he has an action, which is some punch. And that is returning. <laughs> A magic number of two, which is just your damage. However you're calculating that, it doesn't matter. You just want to do whatever you need with your code. So on our villain, we have some Now, we want to still be able to or still have a two. We just want to add one to health. So we build a function that adds to health. I will get out of the way other side of the room, I promise. I'd appreciate that. Then, I'll super, and my syntax might not be perfect here. And, so when we call our super, it's going to call the other method and get that, and then it's just going to return the two again after it does its add now. And the basic idea is, now, I don't have to rewrite whatever that is. Let's pretend that I was 40 lines of code that determined damage based on his strength and stuff. How old he was today, what his name was, which character was. You don't want to rewrite that. You don't want to duplicate that every time. I mean, two is not hard to duplicate. 40 <coughs> lines of code is a waste of space and a waste of your time. Especially because when someone says, I want to change the punch method, suddenly you have to change 40 lines to two spots, and now you're changing 80 lines instead of 40. And by calling super, 
syntax is probably wrong. Don't quote my syntax, ask Google. That's why he's there. But you get the same effect really quick. Further question. Is it better practices to run super before or after? That one, I don't know off the top of my head. In my case, I was running it after solely because I was just returning it. It'll vary heavily on what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. You're super. As with building an object, when's the right time to build an object? Always! When you think you need the object. When you think it's right. Why? Because sometimes it is a script. I've, I've moved database tables. I didn't want to build an object and move a database table. It wouldn't make any sense. I built a script, it ran it, it moved the data. I walked away and let it run. Came back, validate the data, and you're done. But every time I have to dig through my scripts to find anything, my one-off script, I can never find the file I was looking for because I have that pile of useless forms. Okay, further questions from not you. <laughs> you have been shunned. Jerk! <laughs> Go ahead. Well, it's just a comment. It made me think of something Damien said. He said, if you ever catch yourself repeating yourself, then stop, back up, and abstract that thing out. Like you say, don't repeat yourself. So if you catch yourself writing 23 or 2 or whatever that is multiple times, for the same thing, stop and back up and abstract that out. Yeah. And now, that's essentially, I mean, that's that's one of the main themes of what you're saying. So that's that's very yeah. valid. And you've introduced a very great point that I was actually hoping we'd have the time for. We have more than I had anticipated. Soapbox. I'm done. Go to lunch. Talk to each other. If someone wants to get up and talk more about objects or answer each other's questions. Great. Do it. I can't tell you everything. I can't, it's not possible because I don't know your individual situation. I spent, from the day I signed up, I've been working on this presentation and I only finished putting slides together last night because I didn't know what angle to take and I didn't want to be too serious and overload people, <coughs> hence all of my magic memes. I like the use of superheroes, that was very cool. But, yeah, spend some time with each other. Thank you. Sorry it was so short. <laughs>